Hello, hello, hello. I'm Janice and I hope your roads are doing well. I am interrupting the Hawaii series and changing things up for a little bit. I'm currently back in Sydney. It's always nice to be in hot weather. I think as I get older, my preference is towards hot weather versus cold, but there are things that I really, really miss when I am traveling. I think I've talked about this before, one being coffees in Australia. I just think it's so much more affordable and also it just tastes better than any of the other places that I've been to. There's this place in Linfield called Goodfields. They do pretty good like breakfast and lunch options, uh, but I typically usually go for their coffee and it's consistently good. It never disappoints. I'm super excited about today's video because I'm going to be able to learn how to make a really iconic dish from a chef with over 40 years experience. This dish sounds simple and it looks simple but it's actually really difficult to perfect. I mean at least I haven't been able to perfect it. It's the soy sauce fried noodles or Xia Wang Tao Min and I have it on its own or I have it with congee or I have it with yum cha which is where I'm going a little bit later with some of my friends. So we're heading to a very popular restaurant later today. I'm sure some of you have heard of this restaurant or even been there before. There's always a line on the weekends. And before we kick off today's video, I want to thank Amoy for sponsoring today's video. Give good fields a try guys. It's, it's pretty good. Hello, I'm currently in Haymarket, specifically the car park of Market City. So we're heading to one of my friend's favorite place in Sydney to get yum cha. So they obviously do yum cha service, but um, I know that they also do dinner service at night and the seafood there is pretty good. I didn't know that. Park for free when you dine at level three. And for Yum Cha today, we are heading to the eight. Before, there were a lot of people called me Fei Zai Seng. Now, most of the people called me Seng Ko. I started to learn to do a job in Hong Kong from the beginning of the year. I've been doing it for 40 years now. 豉油炒面咧，最基本一定係豉油啦。咁我哋嘅多數係生抽、老抽啦。咁而家你好多好多配搭都俾少少蠔油落去啊，或者俾少少魚露啊，都基本一定係豉油噶啦。所以有靚嘅豉油咧，變咗炒出嚟嘅豉油炒面一定就將佢個香味會提升咯。咁所以將啲芽菜炒香咗佢之後，去咗個腥味。因為佢裏面我哋洗完隻鍋之後咧，有水分咧，咁樣我哋將佢掃翻走啲水分，等佢快啲快啲即係揮發咗佢。咁有時啲鍋乸渣咧就擦乾淨佢，即係好似屋企嘅掃把一樣。<笑>我哋又再燒翻猛隻鍋，<笑>我哋煎一煎個面，等個面個香啲。個鍋一定要夠猛，佢先唔會黐底。你我哋再燒翻佢，我哋開始聞到有嗰面嘅香出嚟啦。你落埋啲幾粒配料落去啦，因為洋葱難熟啲，我哋首先落洋葱先。葱同韭黃咧又因為好快就火嘅啫，唔使咁早落。最後先落麻油，因為麻油一受熱就好快揮發嘅。Okay, I am super super excited to try this beautiful Xia Wang Tao Mian. We've also got a bunch of classics as well. We've got like Har Gao, Siu Mai. We've got two other different types of dumplings, Tasiu So. Anyway. This is so much better than all the attempts I've tried to make a soy sauce king noodle. Like you can taste that like charred flavor from the wok, like a smoky flavor, I guess. It's like a wok hay, you know? And then each noodle, it doesn't stick together, but it's not like too dry either. And like, it sounds simple, you know? It's just soy sauce. It's a combination of the textures, the way that the heat brings out the flavor of the soy sauce. 
it looks and it sounds simple, but it's just not easy to make. Anyway, on to the other dim sum. You know what makes a really good dumpling? There's a saying in Cantonese, pay for harm leg, right? This is like translucent. It's like glistening in light. And I've been like yapping on for a little bit. But when I picked it up, the skin didn't stick to the other dumpling skins. You know how sometimes like they stick together and they break? That didn't happen for this. Ha Gao is my favorite dumpling, followed by Siu Mai. This is the chive dumpling. Look how beautiful it's wrapped. The interior is like bursting with fillings. Okay, there's this other dumpling that I've never had before. This is like a seafood dumpling and inside it has prawns and has scallops as well. The food here is very fresh. The seafood is very fresh. With fried noodles, I feel like you always need congee. So this is a preserved egg congee with some scallions, pork, and thousand year old egg. The kanji is very fluffy. I want to say cloud-like, but I don't actually know what cloud feels like. It's just like very soft and cuddly. My friends also ended up getting a char siu so. This is Chinese barbecue pork inside like a pastry kind of thing. The barbecue pork on the inside and then exterior, it's got that pastry shell. The base is very crumbly. Look at all these different layers. Can you see? So good. There's so many different variations on how you can make cha siu. There's like cha siu bao, there's like cha siu chan fan, and there's like cha siu so, or you can just have cha siu on its own. If you haven't tried this before, you should you should give it a go. They do it pretty well here. I got a plate of beef as compliments from the chef. Yo, this is so cool. Oh, it's Whenever we go yamcha with my family, my dad's always like, we don't need to order vegetables, we can make that at home. But you know, sometimes you just need a little bit of veggies. Hey guys, I am just done with yamcha and I was just like thinking about my whole YouTube journey earlier. I realize I don't say this enough and I really should say it more often. I just want to thank you guys so much for being a part of this journey and this channel, I guess. I remember when I first started my YouTube journey, I would message so many restaurants. I'd send out emails like every single day asking like my favorite restaurants if I could go behind the scenes and shoot how things are being made. I'm not even kidding. 99% of them either ignored me or if they did respond it was like a no which I completely understand because why would anybody let a random into their kitchen and I think as this channel starts to grow people are like more open to you know for example showing us the behind the scenes like I just think it's amazing that I've been able to like go into the kitchens of for example the eight and get to learn about how to make one of my favorite dishes which I know that like three years ago, four years ago, I just wasn't able to do that at all. And it wasn't for lack of trying, <laughs> let me tell you. And you know what? I'm gonna take this opportunity and shameless plug. Please, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I think like as this channel starts to grow more, we just get more opportunities to see and check out different things and yeah. All right, I have got all the ingredients I need to recreate these noodles. And I've also got chicken congee boiling away right now because I think that congee and stir fry noodles are like a match made in heaven. I've got bean sprouts, Chinese chives, onions, egg noodles, spring onions, and soy sauce. And I wanna thank Amoy again for sponsoring this segment of today's video. If you've never heard of Amoy before, it is an iconic household brand from Hong Kong with over a hundred years history. A lot of the dishes that I grew up eating as a kid were made with Amoy products. So I'm very, very familiar with this brand. In addition to the more iconic products that they make like light soy sauce, dark soy sauce, 
oyster sauce, sesame oil. One of my favorite sauces from them is a fish soy sauce, which you pour over steamed fish. It's absolutely delicious. I can eat so many bowls of rice just with it. But they don't just do sauces, they also do frozen goods as well. Like I have a couple examples. Anyway, the goal right now is to cook up these stir fry noodles before my congee is done. So let's get right onto it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and make that sauce mixture and I'm gonna put in my description um, the details of all the ingredients, etc., etc. Okay, the chef said that the secret to a good supreme soy sauce noodle is to have lots of bean sprouts. So I'm gonna do that. And the first thing is to stir fry them first so it gets rid of the, he said like the fishiness from bean sprouts. Spring onions. Lastly, we add just a little drizzle of sesame oil. This looks pretty good. Okay. It smells really good. Oh, it tastes pretty good too. Okay, it's not as good as the chef's one, but this is the best one I've ever made. I'm really, really happy with it. I think that these noodles, it's quite difficult to do perfectly because there just aren't that many ingredients, which means that you can't hide behind anything. You have to get every single element perfect. And my chicken kanji, it's pretty much done. Oh my goodness. Adding dried scallops to your kanji, game changer. Um, I'll put all the details of everything in my description. Thank you so much for watching till the end. And I wanna thank you again for supporting these videos. It's really surreal to me that I'm able to work with a brand that I've known since I was a kid. So it wouldn't be possible if it weren't for you guys. So thank you so much. New videos every week and I'll see you in my next video next week. Bye. In terms of the way it looks, of all the attempts that I've had trying to make the supreme soy sauce noodles, this looks the most promising. And by the time I toss it, if I toss it anymore, everything will come out of the pan. So I'm gonna stop.